Hello there, my name's Irby. I am a Half-Life mapper and modder. Um, I just wanted to make a quick video about something I keep seeing recently and it's, uh, it's driving me a little bit crazy. Um, so, a lot of mods I've seen pop up on ModDB in recent months. Um, they've just been really small map, pack, map, uh, map packs. Um, so one or two custom maps. But the download's like 400 meg. And the reason for that is modders are just taking their entire Valve directory. All the sprites, all the maps, all the models, all this base game stuff, which you don't need to include. Uh, I'm just going to show you quickly all you need to do to set up a, a mod. You only need to include things that you've modified, your custom assets. You don't need to include anything else. So I'm going to make a new folder in my Half-Life directory. I'm going to call it Custard. Empty folder, that's fine. Then I'm going to go to Valve. I'm going to get, uh, grab the liblist.gam file. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste that in Custard. Then I'm going to click it to edit. Bring that over. And I'm going to call it um, Captain Custard's Sticky Adventure making up a dumb name and I can't type. Uh, I'm going to change the start map from C1AO to C1A uh, to COAO to C1AO just to start the game in the lobby at the start of Half-Life. I'm going to save that and close it. Right, that is it. We have now created a mini mod for Half-Life. I'm going to fire up Steam. So you have to restart Steam. If Steam's already running, your mod won't show up in the list unless you restart it. I'm not running Steam at the moment, I'm restarting it now. So if I go to my library and type in Custard, Captain Custard's Sticky Adventure. A Half-Life mod. Huzzah. So, if I play, it will launch Half-Life as standard, because I haven't made any changes other than the start map. Uh, so if I go New Game and Medium Play, this will start me in Anomalous Materials eventually. There we go. Anomalous materials. So, the only change here in this mini mod The only change I've made to this mini mod is the start map. Good to see you. It's good to see you, and hey, Mr. Freeman. this will just play Half-Life. The whole game. Because I haven't made any changes. Um, uh, but that's, that's it. Uh, so if I quit now and go back to my directory it will have created some new files it's made a graph for the map I played, or well, actually it hasn't made a graph, but okay. Um, but that's it. That's everything you need to make a mod, <laughs> a mini mod of sorts. You don't need to add the DLLs if you've not made any code changes. You don't need to add any sprites if you've not made any okay. sprite changes. So I'm going to make a models directory. And in that I am going to place, uh, let me go back to one of my other mods. So I have a custom Barney model, which I've uploaded to ModDB. It's just Barney with a beard and a new helmet. So I am going to take a copy of that, put that in custard models, and then I'm going to launch the game again. Captain Custard Sticky Adventure. And there's Beardy Barney. I've got a bunch of messages for you, but we had a system crash about 20 minutes ago, and I'm still trying to find my file. My God, what are you doing? And that's it. That is a mini mod, essentially. Um, so that is now technically playable. I could release that. I'm not going to release that because it's just a Half Life map. Uh, it's just Half Life with a, a bearded Barney model. But that's essentially it. Okay. So, say I want to actually release a mod with custom levels, same deal. I just go to Maps, I paste a map in there that I've made previously, but otherwise you'd make levels for your mod. Coom01.bsp, which is a map I made a while back. And I'm going to change this so that the start map is Coom01. Save that, close it, and launch Captain Custard Sticky Adventure. So, I go New Game, Medium, Play. And that will load my custom map, which I made previously. Cool beans. And that plays as normal. No coding changes or anything like that. Just works, as Todd Howard would say. 
Um, there's a jeep in here. Why? Who knows? There's also some zombies. They're fine. One more thing to consider. When you've finished working on your mod and you're about to release it, there are some things you shouldn't include in your download. First of all, config.cfg, these are your settings, your graphic settings, your controls, everything that you've configured settings-wise for Half-Life will get copied over to your mod when you play test it. Do not include that in your download because it will change people's settings and it's annoying. So get rid of that. Also, if you've been testing your mod and you've made any saves, they will all be kept here. Do not include the save folder in your download because if someone plays your map and they die, it will then quick load whatever your last save was. It may well jump them to the end. I made this mistake in the past when I released a demo for the core to um, a couple of people. Uh, they died and then it quick loaded a section at the very end of the demo uh, because I left this folder in. So get rid of your save folder. And voiceband.dt. Don't need that either. Um, your node graphs will be automatically made when you run your map. Do include these. Um, if you don't know what a node graph is, learn that because it's important for single player maps. And that's it. So this is my custom mod with a custom model and a custom map. That is less than one megabyte. If I uploaded the Valve folder, that would be 300 megabytes. And if I was going to release this, I'd compress it. So custard.ra. And that is a 300 kilobyte download. That's what I'm getting at. You don't need to be uploading 300 megabyte mods with one map or one model. Stop doing it. It's annoying.